You're looking at my desk setup right now, and for the past month or so, the centerpiece has been this beautiful 42 inch LG C3 OLED TV. I've used it for work, I've used it for editing videos, and naturally I've used it for playing loads and loads of PC games. Uh, I paid for this thing with my own money and it wasn't cheap, but I think I know enough about it now to say whether or not that was a good idea. Okay, so if you're thinking about getting one of these TVs, then just bear in mind a few considerations because uh, it's a TV, not a monitor. So yeah, there are some things that you might not expect, but uh, you do need to bear in mind. So firstly, it's quite large as a monitor and it takes up a lot of space on your desk. I sit about uh, 30 inches away from it, which seems to be a good distance. So just make sure you can get roughly 30 inches away from it and you'll be fine. Another thing to consider is that the stand itself is not adjustable. So if you wanna be able to move it around on your desk, I would definitely recommend getting a third party monitor arm that can handle the weight of this thing. Either that or wall mount it. The other thing is it has quite an unusual uh, VESA mounting pattern. It's 300 by 200, which is not common for monitors. It's a little more common for TVs, but just bear that in mind. Uh, I'll put some links in the description to some monitor arms and uh, wall mount brackets and, and VESA adapters if you need them as well. I'll mention which ones you need them for. Another thing to consider is that being OLED, there is a risk of burn-in if you leave the same image on your screen for too long. Some things that I've done to compensate for this is I, I have I put my taskbar on auto hide. I don't know if it's necessary to do that, but I just thought since, it's, since this thing is quite expensive, I just don't want to risk anything. And I also have set my wallpapers to rotate every 10 minutes. I'm, it's probably overkill, but I just don't want to take any, <laughs> any chances. Another thing that LG has done to reduce the risk of burning is they have this auto brightness dimming thing that goes on when there's too much white on your screen at one point in time, it will turn down the brightness automatically. Uh, some people find that really annoying. I, I don't personally, I'm totally okay with it. You can turn it off, but you have to void your warranty in the process. So not worth doing for me. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I can deal with the brightness and dimming. As I said, it doesn't really annoy me. Um, one thing which does annoy me a little bit, but uh, not too much, is that it doesn't turn on and off automatically like you would expect a regular computer monitor to do because it's a TV, you have to actually turn it on and off. I've, I've got my remote on my desk with me at all times, so it's not a big deal. Uh, again, it is one of those things there is a workaround for, but it's not the most straightforward workaround to set up. Once it's set up for the first time, I think it works pretty much seamlessly from that point onwards, but it involves fiddling with some settings in your router which uh, I haven't felt the need to do just yet. There's an app called LG TV Companion, which you would install and it, it does all of this for you. I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out if you do if you do end up buying one of these TVs. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit. Ooh, have a sip of water. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about how I've been using this thing for work. Uh, my job involves a lot of video calls and having this really large 42 inch screen on my desk is great for that because it really feels like you're almost in the same room as the person and you get a much better sense of that personal connection which has really taken a dive since working from home has become more prevalent than it was before. So yeah, I think just having a really big screen for video calls is amazing. I would definitely recommend it on that basis alone. The other thing about video calls though is you obviously need a webcam and the bezels on this TV are so thin that putting a webcam, just placing it on the top of the screen, it covers and it intrudes into your screen space and that's a bit annoying. So I've actually got my camera up on a second monitor on the side. That doesn't really impact my experience, but the people on the other end of the call are obviously just seeing the side of my face. Uh, you know, you could find a more elegant solution, but just something to bear in mind. On second thought, forget about that webcam thing. Uh, when I was trying to shoot this, I realized that if I just adjusted it slightly, it was actually fine. And it'll totally depend on what kind of webcam you have anyway. Editing videos on this giant screen is a pleasure. All of that extra real estate means it really feels like you're in control of what you're doing 
and you don't have to zoom in and out as much and resize windows. On the topic of resizing windows, there's a really good app called Fancy Zones, which comes with Windows power tools. And it lets you customize the different sizes of your windows and, and snap them to different parts of your screen uh, automatically. Yeah, it's been quite handy, especially if you're thinking about replacing a multi-monitor setup with one big 4K screen. And then finally, gaming on this is just an absolute pleasure. And I've done quite a lot of it. The contrast ratio, the fact that it's FreeSync and G-Sync compatible, excellent. 120 Hertz, the OLED, oh, just the colors look amazing. Really, uh, you always hear about how OLED screens have really good dark blacks, but you don't really realize how important that is until you've experienced it, especially on a big screen like this. It, the best way to describe it is like, it's more true to life because it is giving you a realistic representation of black, which technically is the absence of light, which is exactly what OLED does. So, so yeah, gaming, really looks good however if you want to get the full 120 hertz at 4k you're going to need the right graphics card so it has to have hdmi 2.1 to even support that at all because this tv doesn't have display port and yeah it also needs to be pretty powerful to push out that many frames especially with the more modern games so keep that in mind too okay so in conclusion am i happy with my purchase yeah, I think I am. Uh, I'm really happy with it, actually. It wasn't cheap, but all things considered, it's been really, really good. I don't think I could ever go back. So even though it's quite expensive, I do think it's pretty good value considering that there aren't really any other options out there with this spec, this aspect ratio, that size. It all It's like the total package for me. So yeah, I love it and, um, and I'm happy with my decision. Also, if you are considering buying one of these TVs, I'll put some affiliate links in the description. I'd really appreciate it if <laughs> you can help me earn back some of the money I spent on this thing. So yeah, anyway, thanks guys. See you later.